What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm actually doing a little bit of a weird setup. I'm in one of my Airbnbs right now. Um, so I, I decided to film here just so I could get this video out to you guys. We're talking about something super nerdy. We're talking about unvented addicts versus vented addicts. Now, this is a little bit nerdier of a video than I'm used to doing, but I find this information fascinating, and I think more builders need to start building this way. Um, and I, I posted on social media on uh, Instagram and TikTok, and you guys can follow me there. The, 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 my ads are right down there at the bottom of the screen. But I made a video on TikTok, got 400,000 views, whatever. I was explaining unvented attics and why I'm building my house the way I'm building it. I caught so much backlash from old school builders being like, if it can't breathe, it's going to die. You're not going to ever survive. You're going to have mold in your attic and in less than a year, your roof's going to burn up. Everything's going to go to, you know what? And they were just coming at me. And I didn't know it was so controversial to, to have a vented attic or an unvented attic. Like I didn't realize people were that passionate about unvented attics versus vented attics. So um, over the last few months, I've done a ton of research on vented attics and why people are so scared of them and why we still vent attics the same way we've been venting them since the 40s. Um, and, and it kind of sent me down this rabbit hole of history mixed with building science. And I find it fascinating. So I figured I would share it with you guys here and I hope you like it. Um, also, I'm going to go into somewhat of detail in this video, but I wrote up an entire blog post about this. So if you guys want to do a deep dive into it uh, with more specific dates and information, you guys can go ahead and dive into my blog, which is linked below this video. Give it a read and get a little bit more information. But I'm just going to do a quick video. Well, hopefully it's quick. We'll see how quick I can do this about vented addicts versus unvented addicts. So without any more waste of time, let's get nerdy. Oh yeah, guys, I forgot. If you don't, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Like this video, ring the bell. Helps me out a ton. Helps me move my channel forward and have time to research and do all this stuff for you guys. Um, so if you aren't already, I would appreciate a subscribe and a like and a ring the bell. All those good things. If not, it's all good. Let's keep going. So first things first. Um, one, I'm going to uh, shrink my screen here because ain't nobody need to look at me this big. We are going to talk about the evolution of vented addicts as we know it today and how it's now evolving to conditioned slash unvented addicts, which in my eyes are fairly synonymous. So this is a uh, lath. This is how we used to build roofs back prior to the 1920s, even past the 1920s, um, up to fairly modern times, which is lath is just the thin boards that you see going across here up on the screen. And then what we would do is we would put our, our roofing material on top of that, whether it's cedar shake, you can actually see um, on, on this next photo here, you can see they actually put cedar shake right on top of that lath. And that, that kept the water out, right? But the other thing that you got to keep in mind about this, this style is that all those materials are very, uh, e they, they breathe easily. So you had the ability to dry out your attic. When the sun hit those cedar shingles, it actually dried those shingles out. They would shrink and your roof was able to dry out and breathe. Your attic, excuse me, was able to dry out and breathe. Um, so that was one way that we had already kind of had ventilation in incorporated with our bu building materials uh, when it came to our attics. Now, on top of that, we also used um, cupolas. And this is what a cupola is, right? Nowadays, we use it as decoration, right? We have those things, and there's like a chicken on top with like north, south, east, west, pointing different directions. Um, and they, have, they serve no purpose. They're, they're visually appealing. Back in the day, those were actually vents. They gave your attic or even your vaulted or cathedral ceilings the ability for stale air to exit through your ridge. Um, and then fresh air would obviously come through the body of the home because homes weren't built as tightly as they are today, obviously. So that's kind of how attics were vented, like traditional, traditionally. But then post uh, the cupolas and post the um, the, uh, uh, the the lath and and the tile roof and the cedar shake roofs, um, we kind of got into the plywood game, right? The plywood uh, uh, building material kind of started coming out around the twenties, thirties, and forties. It was really fully being implemented as a building material. Um, and if you guys don't know plywood doesn't really breathe, right? You can't really uh, put plywood tightly together on a roof and expect air to get into your attic and dry it out and, and keep your attic from growing mold and, and getting a lot of other issues. Um, and I want to show you this article that actually uh, I dove into that I thought was really awesome. So uh, this is a picture of a study they did. I think this was 1938, I believe. Um, 1937, 38 or 38, 39. I, again, read the blog if you want to know the very the specifics, um, by Frank Rowley. Now, he did a study where he took um, unvented attic. He took a, uh, or not a traditionally, but a vented attic, I think, through ridge vents and um, soffit vents. 
And then he took a mechanically vented um, mock-up and he put them under extreme weather uh, uh, simulations to see which one gained condensation in the attic, right? Obviously, the unvented one had major issues. Uh, the mechanically vented one did fine, um, but the naturally vented one through the soffits and or through the eaves and through the ridge did, did the best. It, it held the, less, the, the least amount of condensation. So that was a huge study that showed us that we need to vent our attics if we're going to be building with this new plywood material. So in 1949, I know I told you this is going to be a nerdy one. In 1949, um, the, the uh, I'm, bl I'm blanking on the, the name of it, the uh, FHA, uh, I don't even know, let me look at my, the uh, Federal Housing Association. See, see, I got my notes, guys. Look at me go. The Federal Housing Association in 1949 uh, changed the building regulations to include ventilation requirements in attics. So that's where we get to our traditionally vented attics, which I have a diagram here for you guys. Let's take a look at it. So you could see here, if my big head wasn't in the way, um, the air, I'm trying to figure out what hand to point at, this air goes in through your soffit vent, right? And in through your eave, it goes all the way up the plywood on your roof, and then it exits through your ridge vents. This is how we have vented it since 1949. Since 1949, this is how we vented our roofs. Air comes in and gets, and gets entered into your attic space through your, your eaves. Your eaves then, or your, your roof, your plywood, then lets that air travel because heat rises. So the hot air will travel, circulate through your attic, and eventually exit through your ridge, thus drying out and keeping fresh air in your attic space removing the chances of mold, mildew, uh, uh, all other sorts of, of moisture issues. Now, this is a great way to do things. I'm not saying that this just needs to be phased out completely. It's just not efficient. I mean, in what part of your home? Like, if you're sitting in your living room right now, would you ever want any of the air outside to come in? I'm in Texas right now. Right outside, it's 106 degrees. In this old 1930s house, we have just your old school traditional vented attic. In this attic right now, it's probably upwards of 145, 150 degrees in my attic, right? I mean, I could put some cookies up there and, and, and cook them. So with that, this house is also old, so it doesn't have the perfect insulation on the roof. So I'm losing a lot of my energy through this attic, right? Because that heat is hovering above me. It's not efficient, but it does keep my attic dry. So there's that. So overall, when you, when you look at this, it, it shows you um, that it works, but you know, how great does it work? And, and before, before I get into the, vent, the unvented attics, um, I want to talk about the inefficiencies of vented attics, right? So a vented attic that gets to 140 degrees in the summer, especially here in Texas, um, is not good for your mechanics. It's not good for anything that's up there. It's not good for anything you store up there. Nothing like that. Um, we also, if you, if you research how much energy is, is lost through um, attic spaces, you'll realize that uh, traditionally, uh, we lose over 85% of our heat loss in our homes is lost through the attic. 85% of our heat loss goes straight up through the attic. That's really bad. That's, that's not good. Um, and on top of that, uh, up to 30% of conditioned air passes through the ductwork that's coming in from your attic. So all your ducts are ran up in your attic and you have these register vents coming through your ceiling you're losing about 30% of the energy or of the air that your electricity bill is paying for. You're losing 30% of that just into your hot 140 degree attic. So now you've already lost 85% of your heat is lost through your attic and 30% of your conditioned air is lost through your attic due to your attic being 145 degrees and you're trying to keep your home at a, at a nice 74, right? So that's a big issue, and that's something that we've just come back. We've, we we have statistics for it. it's like, hey, if you need, uh, if you have three thousand square foot home, you need to keep in in mind that when you're putting in your HVAC unit, you need to go a little bit bigger because you got to account for for leakage. Like that's something that's a calculation that HVAC technicians do. They're like, okay, well, you know, we need to calculate for uh, leakage so that you don't undersize your unit. Why? That's not efficient. No, in no one's book of efficiency is accounting for leakage as just part of the game. It should be eliminating leakage. So there's just one or two big issues with the, the attics, uh, the vented attics that we have right now. So now we're going to move on um, to your uh, unvented attic. 
Um, and, and just to keep in mind during all of this, think about how many holes are in your ceiling. If you're sitting in your house, just look up. Like you might have a ceiling fan. You might have 12 can lights, right? Uh, you have registers sticking out. Uh, you have wires coming down through your two by four top plates, two by eight, two by six top plates. Uh, you have whatever is hanging on your roof. You got, uh, um, uh, you know, fire alarms, all these different things, smoke detectors, stuff like that. There are, we put a lot of holes in our ceilings, right? So every hole in your ceiling is not sealed perfectly. Each one has a margin of error. So when you add all that up, um, you know, it, it could, it could equal quite a bit. All right. So now moving on to unvented attics or conditioned attic spaces, you can see here in this diagram, the attic here is only about 10 degrees, which I, if I, the house that I'm building, I'm shooting for a lot less than 10 degrees, but in this case, it's 10 degrees higher than your conditioned area. Therefore, you're not having a ton of heat in your attic. Like that's, that's not bad at all. So what a conditioned attic is, is basically saying that instead of making your attic this exterior kind of space, right? Just leaving it uh, with the exterior air can come in, rats, animals, all these different things can go into your attic and you're just like out of sight, out of mind. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. It's dirty. How many of us hate going in our attic? Like every last person. Now we're changing it to a conditioned space, almost categorizing it as an additional room. Now, most people are going to say, hey, John, you're an idiot. Now you have to condition an entirely, uh, entirely new space in your attic. How are you possibly going to do that? And to you guys, I say, uh, one, keep in mind, 30% of your HVAC system is lost through your attic, in your attic. So how many people's attics are 30% larger than their home, right? You're already losing 30% in your attic. So if your attic is less than 30% of your original square footage, you're not, you're not spending any extra money in your attic. Two, during the summer, you're, you're losing up to 85% of your lost heat through your attic. So now you got 30% of leakage that's already being lost. 85% of your heat that's lost in the, in the winter, excuse me, is now being saved. There's your money right there. If, if, if I, I could stop right there and be like, boom, there you go. Now, to do this condition addict, I'm going to go through that real quick. But if you want to get more in detail with that, you can read the blog. To do this condition addict, what you want to do is, one, you want to insulate the exterior of your home. Now, if you look at my house and, and what I'm doing here, you see that I have no eaves on my house. So what I'm going to do is I'm doing insulation on the exterior walls and roof of my house. Once I do that exterior insulation, um, and you can see on, on, oops, on this one, um, I haven't done the insulation yet, so I don't have a picture of that. Uh, but you can see here, there are no eaves. So I imagine that picture right there, but every corner, every crevice, every nook and cranny is going to have exterior insulation. Therefore, putting an entire blanket of insulation on the exterior of my home, right? Because what we're doing with these conditioned attics is we're combating the issue before it enters our envelope, right? Right now, we let the heat and the issues into our attic space, and then we try to combat it to get it out to make sure we have a conditioned space. What I'm doing is saying, why don't we not even let the heat and the issues into our envelope. Let's put the insulation on the exterior, right? Let's put uh, uh, some other different types of barriers, which I, which I go into on the blog, to, to keep the sun from, from coming in and reflect it out. And then once we do that, we don't have to combat this issue of you know, uh, uh, heat inside of our home or lossage or leakage of anything, right? It's all a tight envelope now. You can also see in this picture, my roof is taped to my walls. There is no opening. My, my sheathing goes straight up, it attaches to my roof and it's taped all along that seam, thus reducing critters, right? I'm not going to have any rats, snakes, uh, insects into my house because I'm taped at the foundation. I'm also taped at the roof. Huge bonus, especially living here in Texas. So once, once that's done, uh, what we're going to do next is you can see this is actually a, a house from Matt Reisinger. You frame your rafter tails after you uh, put your, your roof on. So, and then your insulation goes in between that, thus pretty much eliminating 90% of your thermal bridges. And a thermal bridge is basically where heat can transfer through a member from the outside of your house to your house. So like a rafter tail is a thermal bridge, two by four studs are a thermal bridge, unless you put insulation over the stud, which you can't if you're, if you're insulating the inside of your house. You put insulation in between your studs, but you still have a stud in contact with the exterior and a stud in contact with the interior. And those are all thermal bridges. So 16 inches on center, you have a ton of thermal bridges on every single wall, exterior wall of your house. Putting insulation on the outside of that eliminates those for the most part. Um, so you do that with your roof as well because rafters are the same issue. Your rafters are directly in contact with your uh, roof decking. Here, we're not gonna be having that issue because we're gonna have insulation on our roof. 
Now, by doing this, um, in my case, I'm going to be doing a metal roof. So on top of this, uh, once this insulation is done, you're going to throw purlins on top of um, that insulation. And then your metal roof, in my case, is going to go on top of those purlins, thus giving you a, an air gap. And any condensation that gathers under your roof will have the ability to drain in between those purlins. That's why you put those purlins at a 45 degree angle. All condensation and water that gathers under your metal roofing lands on your, uh, your house wrap, drains out through your house wrap under your roof, and you're, you're eliminating all the uh, moisture and condensation from your attic. Now, another key point, and I'm rushing through this because I'm trying to wrap this video up. Another key point is that you want to make sure that your ridge um, is vapor permeable. So you can see here that um, you want to make sure that moisture can, if it does, enter your attic. It can exit through your ridge, but it's not a ridge vent. It's just letting that moisture dry out through your ridge, and it's not letting anything in or anything like that. It's purely to make sure that you don't have that ridge condensation and end up with ridge rot. I would also recommend if you're going to go through this, and I go through this all on the blog if you want to go look at it, is that you want to make sure you put a dehumidifier in your attic space. Um, nothing crazy, you know, just something to remove moisture um, as moisture comes. And um, you can actually integrate that into your home system to where it has a drip line, almost like a condensation line from your AC, uh, AC unit, where um, you can just make sure that there's not going to be any issues in your attic. Once again, all these mechanics in your attic are going to be lasting a lot longer and performing way or a lot more efficiently because they're not going to be in 140 degree weather um, and you're just going to perform better. Now, I'm running through this and I know I'm, I'm kind of blabbering. I'm kind of going on and on about a bunch of different stuff. But overall, the point of, of this conditioned versus unconditioned attic is that if you condition your attic, you're, you're removing leakage, you're removing um, uh, uh, wasted energy that is, you know, either being lost through leakage or through uh, your heat being lost, you know, at almost 85% of your heat lost in your house goes to your attic, um, as well as you're preserving your equipment and your utilities that are up in your attic, as well as you're eliminating the leakage of your home. So when you do have your home down to 72 degrees, you're not going to have your AC unit kick on 30 times a day. It's going to kick on twice because you're not losing hardly any energy. So if you want it at 75, it's going to stay at 75 without having to keep dropping the temperature down so that you can stay comfortable. So overall, it's going to save you a ton of money um, in, in energy costs, as well as it's going to be cleaner air, um, and you're going to have a lot other bonus features with that. I talk about it in the blog, as well as uh, ERVs and other things like that. Video sporadic. I understand that. I hope you guys could follow along with me. I had to go through this quick. I have to be out of this Airbnb in like 10 minutes because I have guests checking in, and um, it's 2.20, or it's 2.50, uh, uh, and they check in at um, three o'clock. So I got to get out of this Airbnb. Um, it's all clean. It's already been clean. We're good to go. All I got to do is pick up my stuff, make sure I don't make, make, make a mess. And um, I hope this video helps somebody. I think unvented addicts are are um, the way to go, especially when it comes to your envelope, your lumber, all this different stuff. It's just going to um, be easier on your home. Why not combat the heat before it gets into your house, keeping it away from all of your, your framing members, keeping it away from all your equipment, keeping it away from everything, keeping the animals, the, the, the rat poop, all that stuff out of your air, out of your lungs. It's a way cleaner way to build, a way more efficient way to build, and I hope more builders do it without just writing it off because they don't like new and uh, they think new is bad. Great way to build. Hope this helps somebody. I appreciate y'all. Subscribe if I helped you in any way. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Much love.